Hi, YouTube. Hello from Help Free Sean. For anybody who cares about justice for all, for all people here in the United States, liberty and justice for all, I want to share with you two very important facts about the Sean Rodriguez case so you could see how broken the courts are in this country, specifically in California. Fact one, how the jurors reasoned their vote to convict Sean guilty of conspiracy to commit murder. Sean was charged with attempted murder and conspiracy to commit murder, a bunch of pretty heinous things, which was overblown. Even the jurors felt that. They wrote that in their post-trial comments, that the district attorney could have brought much lesser charges than the ones he did. And that he had a go for the throat attitude and just, just took it too far. He took it too far. William Markey was his name. Bad, bad man, if you ask me. So what happened in the Sean Rodriguez case is um, Sean basically agreed to be there for a friend while she robbed her boyfriend. And he said he'd, you know, protect her if something happened. And then those two idiots, Anna Rugg, his friend, quote, friend, not really a friend, and the, her boyfriend, Nick, both made the whole situation snowball. Sean was there and got sucked into their stupidity. Um, Anna decided that she wanted to kill Nick. She wanted to push him off a bridge. Sean talked her out of it. She wanted to beat him with a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire. Sean talked her out of it. Sean was afraid for his own life from her. Sean was also afraid that she was going to frame him for her criminal activities. He was afraid. So he played along, let her think what she wanted, let her say what she wanted, and was looking for a way to make her give up, to believe that Nick was dead and leave it alone so he could be free of Anna and go tell the cops what had happened. Um, Sean didn't want to kill Nick Hammond and the jurors were very clear on that. They all knew Sean had no intent to kill Nick Hammond. And the fact of the matter is that Sean actively sabotaged Anna's desires to commit a murder. But he sort of went along with it because he was too afraid not to. You can understand how that would happen. You got a murderous person around and if you don't go along with it, they might kill you or they might frame you for a murder you didn't want anything to do with. Sean was indeed Anna's second victim. And by the way, she tried to get many young men to co-commit crimes with her. Um, she had a, a well-documented history of that and the judge did not allow that in the courtroom. This would have let the jurors know, oh, Sean was sort of her victim. She had a track record of this, but there was some um, bias against Sean that he was a bad dude. The cops planted evidence. The cops scared away eyewitnesses. The judge didn't allow in testimony that was relevant. And so the system was just extremely biased right from the beginning. Sean was not even given... He was not given his Miranda rights, the right to remain silent right when he was arrested. They forced him to speak by not letting him go to the bathroom, not letting him take his ulcer medication, not letting him sleep, not letting him get warmed up after he was wet and cold. Um, and so the authorities in Placer County, California, really did some very immoral, unethical things to Sean. But I digress. The point I'm trying to make is that jurors believed Anna probably had intent to kill Nick, but Sean sure as hell didn't. And one of the requirements to convict someone of conspiracy to commit murder or attempted murder, both, is that the person who's charged with these crimes must have intent to kill. Otherwise, you cannot convict them 
of either attempted murder or conspiracy to commit murder. And these jurors were inconsistent. They decided that Sean didn't have intent when it came to attempted murder. But when it came to conspiracy to commit murder, he did have intent. So how did he have an intent to kill, but then he didn't have intent to kill? The jurors were confused and misled. They were so confused that they actually asked Judge Francis Kearney to clarify the law. And Judge Francis Kearney told the jurors that Sean was aiding and abetting Anna. And the law says if you're an aider and abetter, you're just as guilty of, of the crime the other person is around. So you could drop someone off, you could drive them to a crime scene and they could kill someone and you could get booked for murder. And that's essentially what happened in Sean's case. The juror didn't think Sean had any intent to kill, but he was associated with Anna who did have intent to kill. So guess what they did? They convicted Sean of conspiracy to commit murder. They, they found him guilty of conspiracy to commit murder, even though he himself had no intent, which is a requirement to convict someone of that. They were confused. It's a travesty. The second travesty in this case is that Sean was, because he was found guilty of conspiracy to commit murder, the punishment for conspiracy to commit murder is the same as if a murder had actually occurred. Let me say that again. The punishment for conspiracy to commit murder is the same as if a murder had occurred. Nick Hammond was not murdered. He's still alive. Even today in 2023, he wasn't even injured. He admits four times in writing and once verbally recently that he committed perjury. He's confessing to the crime of perjury, facing prison time himself for doing so because he feels so guilty that he lied on the stand under oath and misled jurors into thinking that he almost died and it was all Sean's fault. I'm guessing the authorities pressured Nick Hammond to do that. I guess we'll never know. Why else would he lie? Why else would he come forward with his confession 12 years after the fact, admitting he committed perjury? Well, it must be because he believes Sean deserves to be free at this point, 12 years in prison. It's been 20 years now. Because eight years ago, Placer County Courts had an opportunity to right this wrong and they swept it under the rug and ignored it and sent Sean back to prison for life, even knowing the only victim has admitted to perjury. And oh, by the way, it's our constitutional right to a fair fucking trial. And there was no fair trial here. So my point is that Sean got a 25 to life prison sentence for a murder crime and there was no murder. There was no physical injury. There was no physical injury, let alone murder. And the victim admits to lying and the cops planted evidence and the cops scared eyewitness, um, eyewitnesses away from testifying the truth of what they, they saw. Jurors were confused. They, it's very clear if you read the post-trial comments from jurors that they were very confused and that's why they had inconsistent verdicts. They were crying as Sean was read his sentence. They were literally crying. <laughs> they, <clears throat> they gathered out in the hallway afterwards to discuss what had just happened because they were so shocked at how overblown Sean's punishment was for what he had done. He basically had participated in a robbery, maybe false imprisonment, and auto theft at most. But instead, he was actually given sentences for aggravated kidnapping for extortion, which he had nothing to do with. And the jurors even knew it. There's juror comments saying, Sean wasn't there for the kidnapping, and, we, and I know it. But he still got a, a seven to life sentence for kidnapping, which he had nothing to do with. He wasn't even there when Anna did it. He was in another part of the building. 
with Aaron Hughes, who could have confirmed that, but the cops scared her away from saying what she saw. Aaron Hughes could have prevented that seven-to-life sentence for kidnapping, but the cops told her if she said too much that she would get convicted of the same crime, or she would get uh, charged with the same crimes as Sean. So she's just, I'm not going to say much then. I don't want to go to prison. That's what Aaron Hughes did. And um, what else can I say? Sean got a life sentence for conspiracy to commit murder when no murder occurred. And oh, by the way, the laws have changed saying that if you were convicted of murder or attempted murder as an aider and a better, that you are entitled to a resentencing because now the law acknowledges that culpability is not the same as an aider and a better as it is for the actual person who was, you know, the main offender in the crime. And uh, Placer County has said, oh, those, those laws don't apply to Sean because he got conspiracy to commit murder, not attempted murder or murder. So Sean's actually being punished worse than people who actually kill a human being. And Sean was working to save Nick Hammond. And I think even Nick Hammond knows it. And that's why he's gone out of his way to, to take action with authorities to try to help get Sean some relief. I just can't even believe how broken the Placer County courts are. I just can't even believe it. Our government is failing big time, especially in the courts, especially in Placer County, California. I hope you care. I hope that if you're watching this, you see how broken the system is and you use your likes and your shares and your clicks to make these facts known so that we, the people, can tell those people in government, in Placer County, in the courts, what the heck, do what's right. Resentence this man appropriately. He's already been in prison 20 years. Didn't deserve that. He lost his entire 20s and his entire 30s over this. Anyway, I don't want to blabber for too long, but I did want to let you all know Again, just to hammer home the point, Sean's in prison because Anna had intent. And Sean was sentenced as if a murder occurred, even though there was no murder. Can you believe that? I can't. And it makes me angry. <sighs> Deep breaths. All right, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Bye.